Welcome to the kickoff of my YouTube channel. I'll be starting things off by assembling my Core i7-6700K system build. I'll be using the Z170 Deluxe motherboard from ASUS, the ASUS Strix 980Ti video card, and I will also be using the Intel 750 solid state drive. My case selection is the Carbide Series Air 540. We'll start by unboxing the Carbide Air 540. It's packed very tightly into its shipping container, so tightly that I actually broke the styrofoam while trying to pull it out. I'd recommend having a second person help you if you have that option. The case is protected by a black sleeve, which would prevent any kind of nicks or scratching during the shipping or packing process. I was quite impressed with the case itself. The case has a very nice painted finish, all aluminum, and it's very, very lightweight. Uh, this is probably one of the lightest cases I've ever had, and overall I'm very satisfied with the general look. This is the Z170 Deluxe box. I'm going to unbox it so that we can check out what's inside and get everything set up to start installing the motherboard into the case. The Z170 Deluxe is very feature rich. It comes with three PCI Express X16 ports. However, the third port is only available up to X4, which is perfect for the Intel storage drive that we'll be using. I recommend using a static strap, even though a lot of people will say that it's not necessary or that they haven't really had the need. Uh, I prefer to use one just because uh, static electricity one jolt has about 25,000 volts uh, in it, and you can imagine that if your CPU or core components are only designed to operate uh, at 1.4 volts or 1.3 volts, that 25,000 volts would be enough to fry them completely. This case was really nice to work with. It came with all of the standoffs pre-installed, and there even is a, a pre-existing standoff that has a little dot, a little bump that you can actually rest the motherboard in when you put it down so that you don't have to fiddle with it too much. Now I decided on the Core i7-6700K. The reason for that was quite simple. Uh, it's the next-gen Skylake processor. It's got four cores, hyper-threading, stock speed of 4 gigahertz, and a lot of people have had a great success overclocking this thing to 4.6, 4.7, with very little tweaking to the voltage needing to be done. I will be doing a quick overclocking video to show how to overclock and some of the things that are concerning like your voltage, your VID being spiked to 1.5 volts in a lot of cases. Uh, but we'll touch on that in my next video. So the CPU, you want to take obviously your precautions with installing it. Uh, make sure that everything is lined up, the arrow, arrow is pointing to the correct corner. It does come with an installation uh, plastic module to hold the CPU for installation. I didn't use it. Um, it's really unnecessary. When you lock the processor uh, plate down, it'll pop the plastic piece right off. I chose the H110i GTX cooler. One, because this is a Corsair build in general. So I wanted to focus on Corsair and ASUS for this build. Uh, the water cooler is a 280 millimeter radiator. It's got dual fans and uh, the performance ratings are really good. Corsair has a really good track record with creating very good water coolers that are all in one units. And this is the first water cooling build that I'll be doing uh, simply because I'm terrified of water cooling and potential leaks. But Corsair has a very good track record and their warranties are not bad as well. The only issue I ran into with this cooler was that the screws uh, didn't quite line up the way that they should. Uh, now, the radiator is aluminum, so you want to be careful not to over-tighten your screws. I did have to use a larger drive screwdriver to finish it off. Installing the radiator into the case is actually quite easy. The top part of the case pops off very quickly, and there's just a few screws to mount the radiator in place. Very easy to do. Awesome case to work with. I highly recommend it to builders. Uh, the footprint of the case is a little larger, of course, but it does do the trick quite nicely. So the backing to actually, uh, the backplate for the cooler is very easy to install. There's just four little 
screw mounts that just pop through the back. And then you wanna make sure that you put the standoffs in correctly. Now the kit comes with two sets of standoffs. One is for AMD, one is for Intel. You wanna make sure that you pick the right ones. You'll notice that the top of the screw is actually shorter and skinnier for the thumb mount screws. You wanna be sure not to over tighten the thumb screws. They only need to be hand tightened. You don't need to use a screwdriver to tighten them all the way. Make sure they are secure and well tightened uh, if you are hand tightening and a very small amount of force with a small drive screwdriver if you're completely unsure, but do not over tighten them. For a power supply, I chose the Corsair RM1000 series. Uh, that's a 1000 watt power supply, which I will recognize is overkill for this build presently. However, I always like to err on the side of caution with power. If you're running a 1000 watt power supply, uh, you will not need to worry about over uh, drawing too much power from it. You won't need to worry about it wearing out too quickly. Obviously, if I bought a 600 watt power supply and I was using 600 watts all the time or close to, uh, it would wear out the power supply much quicker with heat and whatnot. The power supply fits very nicely into the back of the case, and I think this is one of the biggest highlights of this case is having a secondary section that's walled off from the main components so that you don't have to worry about a lot of that hot air recirculating within your case. The power supply was really easy to install. Uh, the only trick was I had to pull out the small uh, 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive mounts uh, and they were a little hard to get out. I actually broke the plastic on one of them uh, trying to get it snapped out of there. It's a little bit tricky. This case is great for hiding cables. Uh, you don't have to really worry and, and I'm usually very meticulous about my cables but because there's that extra slot in the back to just kind of store everything, that's where I decided to keep them. Now, one of the drawbacks to this case, if you're into saving money, is that the full-size hard drives, there's only mounts for two of them. Uh, the other mounts are all designed in the back section, and they're all for two and a half inch drives, the small laptop drives. So uh, for me, that's good enough. I bought two two terabyte Seagate drives. Uh, I'm going to put them in RAID 1 just to store all my data, photos, video, that kind of thing. And uh, then I decided to go a little bit higher end on the actual drive for my OS and my primary applications. So I decided to go with the PCI Express Intel Solid State Drive 750 series. Uh, this drive has amazing performance numbers. It's pulling 2.2 gigabytes per second read speeds and over a gigabyte write speeds per second. Now, uh, a lot of people who have been benchmarking these have been actually doing it wrong. A lot of people have been uh, utilizing the wrong ports and components on their motherboard, which forces this drive into operating on X2 mode when you're only getting about one gigabyte per second read speed. So uh, make sure that you're reading your manuals and checking to make sure that you're not utilizing ports or, or features on your motherboard that will cause the that port to operate at anything less than now for a video card, I decided to go with the ASUS Strix Gaming GeForce GTX 980 Ti. This is a little bit overkill for the usual systems that I build. I usually like to stick with the 970s or the, at least the 70 series. And I'm going from a 570 GTX to the 980 Ti. So this will definitely be a, a large upgrade for me. Uh, this video card, the reason I chose it was for the extra uh, processing capability that I can use in, for Photoshop, Adobe, and any uh, rendering that I want to be doing. Uh, the graphics card itself, it's beautiful. Uh, it's extremely quiet. Uh, it has three fans that really only kick in when they need to. And for your games from 2013, 2012, uh, your fans won't even come on. This thing has enough power to operate with air cooling only, especially in this case. So this, uh, this is definitely a beast of a card and I'm very much looking forward to getting it in and getting it running. For those of you who don't know, Strix is some kind of weird cybernetic owl. Uh, I don't know much about it. I've been out of the hardware scene for a while. I've built a few computers for people, but uh, it, it's been a while since I've built one for myself. My last computer was seven and a half years ago. It was a QX9650 quad-core extreme on a ASUS Striker 2 extreme motherboard. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this build. 
This video card's really cool because it's got a lot of reinforcing on it. It's got a back plate, it's got reinforcing on the GPU. So this thing's really designed to hold together. The only complaint that I still have is motherboard manufacturers and video card manufacturers still don't really take into consideration how much the card bends and hangs uh, in the far right hand corner from what you can see here. Uh, the card does tend to bend a fair bit under its own weight. For RAM, I decided to go with the 2666 megahertz DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. Uh, this RAM is on the compatibility list for the Z170 motherboard. And uh, though I was not able to get this RAM to boot with XMP profiles on the motherboard initially, uh, it did work once I updated the BIOS. Well, that comes to the conclusion of my build. Uh, I have done some benchmarking and some testing, and I will be posting another video shortly, which will show how to overclock your system, how to keep it stable, and some of the feature sets that come with uh, some of the software for the Corsair uh, all-in-one water cooler, as well as the motherboard features. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. If you have any specific questions about the build or have something that you'd like to ask a question about, please post in the comments and I'll be happy to reply.